Hello friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to talk about is it a good time to buy a property, a condo, a house in Toronto and if you stay to the end of this video I'm going to tell you my best trick to find and pick the best investment unit available. I'm not joking. Very, just one trick. But first, let's get to business. And today's question is, is it a good time to buy property real estate in Toronto right now? So, um, let's ask Google. It's the first thing I do with anything these days. Is it, it a full moon, not yet, good time to buy a condo in Toronto? Well, you know, Google knows that that's what I search for. Um, but there you go. Why it's a great time to buy a condo. Why Toronto condo market stay hot. And drawing conclusions, should you wait for you, should you, would you wait for a market crash? Okay, great. There's any other AMPs here? Uh, the top neighborhood to buy, what's wrong with condos, TVO, 100,000 salary you need to afford, Toronto condo says report. Okay, so there you go. Um, maybe half and half, 60, 40, whatever. So, you know, this is media and uh, with all respect to media, they write about a lot of stuff, but, you know, it, it's great to report, but let's look at the real information from the inside and see what I mean. Is it a good time to buy? All right. Uh, the first thing I would do is I would probably head to um, TREB, Toronto Real Estate Board, and go to Market Watch, which is the yellow one right here. Okay. And then we're going to Market Watch, which is right here. And you get this little release. And if you want to see, look at the historic annual sales and average prices, that link is broken. It's been broken for months. TREB, you got to fix it. But that's pretty funny. All right. But this one works. Click here to see full report in PDF. So this is the market watch for October 2018. Let's take a quick look and understand from here, is it a good time to buy real estate in Toronto? Okay, uh, right here. In October 2017, we had 7,069 sales. And in October 18, we had 7,492. So 430, 420-some uh, sales more. Pretty good, huh? Um, why is that? Why are there more sales? Uh, does that mean people are just want to ditch their properties or maybe the investors are flipping or what's going on? Okay, well, there's a combination of things. First of all, you must remember that every year we bring online, we complete, we deliver keys to 10 to 20,000 units uh, in the GTA. Now, that may sound a lot, 10,000 units, but if you think that the new buildings hold five or six, some of them 800 units or a condo complex will hold 1,000 units, that's 10 large complexes. You know, now those complexes takes uh, they take years to design, to build. You know, th hundreds, thousands of trucks coming in and out. The construction itself can take four years. But you know, how many cranes are in Toronto right now? Like close to two hundred, right? Most cranes that uh, in North America are, not, are in Toronto. They're imported, by the way, from Europe. A lot of them. Uh, I talked to this crane guy. Um, but you know, there's a lot of construction happening, but. There's not enough units. There are not enough beds. What's going on, right? And why is it important? Well, it's like this. The world population is moving to urban centers. The world population is moving to city centers, okay? When you are moving to a city center, okay, um, there's more demand for property in that area. Let's fly to Toronto. Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Thanks, Google. Okay, really lovely here. And look from the air, look at the density here, okay? So you can see the density goes all the way to Markham, to Vaughan, to Brampton. What do we got here? Um, Mississauga, Oakville, Burlington, Milton. And then, you know, on the other side, you'll get like St. Catherine, Hamilton kind of thing. All right? So if you really think about it, this is not such a large area. I mean, yes, it's very dense. And yes, you know, 10 million people live here. But look how much space we have. Why is everyone coming down? Everyone's coming down because we're moving from an agricultural, industrial society, you know, Henry Ford, Model T, uh, all that stuff. Moving downtown, moving to information age, to information society, to everything has to do with information and technology. So, you know, that also brings the argument that what's going to happen to the old uh, donkey car drivers and the taxi drivers and the milkmen and the real estate agents and all these jobs, functions of society that will be uh, no longer needed. And, you know, the millions, billions of people that are doing these jobs, even, you know, real estate agents, they're going to have to adopt. Um, and that's what's happening. And as you adopt, we're moving more into a technological society. We want to be closer to each other. Although some say that on a social level, we actually have never been farther away. But that's a whole other uh, uh, 
discussion. And we move into the city centers to work together, to create together, to invent together, and to improve our lives because that's what it's going. I mean, you know, we have enough food and shelter and all that stuff. Uh, so for many of us, and hopefully all of us, um, will enjoy everything that we here at downtown Toronto enjoy. Um, but you know what I'm saying? It's like it's coming in. So people need a place to live. People need a bed. People need a house, a condo, or property. And, you know, the prices are going up because that is a real property. It's a real estate, okay? It's not a stock. It's not a bond. It's not some kind of piece of paper that someone can take from you. No, it's real. You can get in there. You can see it. You can hold it. And that's amazing. And I think that's part of human nature. Look at this crazy, crazy density. That just, it's just unreal. And it's going to get more and more and more. Okay, Yossi. So, fine. So, you got Toronto, blah, blah, blah. What else you got? Okay. So, now let's look at the other argument. The other argument says that, listen, this is like, what's going on here? Why do we need to increase the prices all the time? Um, well, you know, we're still eating the same tomatoes every, every morning, right? I'm still having the same tea, still buying the same coffee. Why is that espresso, Americano, whatever you like, uh, Tim Hortons cost $2 yesterday and 3 today? Okay, well, that has to do with a much broader picture of how this economy, this society that we live in is, is run and handled and how we do this as a, as a global society, okay? That's what's going on, okay? So there's a combination of things here. And one of the things that always work for human beings is their homes. You know, maybe it was a cave first and now you get a little narrow condo, but it's also a cave. But you know what I'm saying? It's yours. And if you can put your name on it and you own it, there's a pride of ownership, but it's also knowing that, you know, you can come there every day. And as long as you paid your bills and your municipal taxes, you're good. So imagine that, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, um, you own a bunch of condos. Maybe two, maybe five, maybe 20, maybe 200. It doesn't matter. Even one. You live in that condo and after 10 or 20 years, it's been paid for. Hopefully someone else paid for you. That means you put your 20% in your closing costs and then your tenants throughout the years paid for all your expenses. And you come back 10 or 20 years later and you basically got yourself a condo for 20% of what it cost you 10 or 20 years ago. All right? See what I'm saying? So all these giant condos that you see, a lot of these what call, call retail investors are really mom and pop. They come together and say, you know, I want to buy a property because I don't trust the banking system anymore. I don't know what to do with my money. Uh, Bitcoin's done for now at least you know what do I do well you know if you have hundred thousand dollars available you can still buy a condo in Toronto barely but you can uh, in the junction right now you can still get a condo for five hundred thousand so twenty percent is a hundred you know staggered over some payments you can do it but if you don't next year that condo will be 550 and then 600 then you need 120 so can you save twenty thousand in a year that's, that's a lot of money. It's like $1,800 a month to save. Okay? Not a lot of people can do that. So that's the thing. If you don't grab the property today, if you don't invest in a condo today, will you able to do this tomorrow? And that's why you see this rush. And what happened, you know, when we started, I was buying stuff at 200 bucks a foot. Let me show you something really, really crazy. I found this. Uh, I did a search on my computer for floor plans, and I found this floor plan. And it's a fashion house, and there's a date that they faxed it to me, and it was July 27th, 08. And remember, 08 was not a good year. Everything was kind of dead for a bit. And sweep 408, 2249, nine-foot ceiling, east exposure, blinds included. Okay? Here's another one, 520 square feet. This is original from fashion house. Developer sent me this stuff. Uh, 279.9 for the 13th floor and 269.9 uh, for the 12th floor. Wow. I mean, these units are worth easily $550 today. Easy. 10-foot ceilings, probably more. This is the king building. This is amazing. Okay? Um, so what's going on here? Like, so, so this is basically uh, 10 years and, you know, three or four months. And the thing, say, doubled itself, okay? More or less doubled itself. So in 10 years, that property doubled itself. Was it expensive at the time? Yes. Did they have a hard time selling this building? Oh, yes. It stood here for a year. And then, you know, there was an economic slump. But it did sell, and everyone that bought here did really well. 
Now, does that mean that you're going to do well because you buy anywhere? No, absolutely not. You're not. you got to buy the right property at the right location at the right price. Get the right incentives. Basically, try to get the entire package. And the more you can get out of it, the better. Okay? Because your goal is to be mortgage-free as soon as possible. And if you own multiple properties, your goal is to be cash flow positive as soon as possible. Sometimes you use the mortgage, the write-offs that you can write from mortgage, not all, but some, to balance your sheets, to basically get out ahead, have more money in your pocket when it's done. All right. Um, so, let me look at the note here. Okay, so I got some pros and cons. Okay, so the pros, obviously, we discussed. You own a property. Someone else is paying for it. Someone else is paying for your property. That's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, those who pay for your property, maybe they're young and they're just starting out, or they're immigrants, or they have no money, or whatever it is, it's, so it's totally okay. Uh, but some of these people also are the people that think the market will crash tomorrow, and they rent. And by them renting, they're actually enriching all the people they yell against. It's very strange. Um, but, you know, maybe the market will crash. And let's get to the cons. Will the, will the Toronto condo market crash? Will the real estate crash? Well, here, here's, here's how it is. The entire economy is built on these assumptions, various assumptions, okay? For example, why do we have inflation? Why do prices have to go up all the time? Well, because we devalue our money, because we print so much of it, because we have all this debt, so we can't really pay the debt. So we take more debt, and then we print more money to pay that debt, but that needs more debt, da 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 da, da and it, it's an endless spiral, okay? So is it, does it really mean if Ontario owes uh, $14.5 billion, a trillion, or whatever it is, gazillion dollars, or 15 I don't know. I don't think so, because it's not real money anymore. Nobody really cares. Everyone gets paid, right? So as long as everyone's getting paid and everyone has a roof and something to eat and, if, and, and you know, the basic necessities of life, which is food, shelter, doctor, teacher, you know, the, the very clothing, the basic necessities of life, we're good. Yes, it could be harder. We're going to have to hustle hard the next few years, maybe forever. But you know what? We had a pretty good run. It's time to hustle, my friends. Now, will the, econ will the economy crash? It could, absolutely it could. There's a lot of indications that are saying, uh, this is crazy. This is uncharted territory. We've never been there before. The, but does it mean it crash? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Nobody knows, okay? But for now, here's what I'm doing. I'm focusing on the best units I can find that, in my opinion, will do good for me, okay? And then what I do, I put them and I post them on my website. So you can see. Top five junction condos. This will tell you what I think of the top five junction condos and why. And recently I've been adding a lot of videos. So here's top five junction condos. And I'll tell you right away, I really like the junction house. This thing is launching today, by the way. If you're looking for a really good investment, I think this project and some others will be just fantastic. And, and you can look here uh, at this video at your own time and play it. It's on YouTube too. Uh, Scout condos, Semington coming up, East Junction, Archloft. And there's, there's, there's a whole, it's, it's just beautiful. There's a whole area that you can invest in. It's not a problem. The other way to find where to invest is go to my Twitter, and I post quite often um, whatever I got, okay? So maybe it's a video. There's a lot of videos. There's opportunities. You know, if you click here for the stockyards, this will take you to a registration page. And once you fill this registration here, this is for stockyards. It launched uh, earlier in the week. Um, and once you go to this registration page, it'll send you the access to the floor plans and the prices. Download the floor plans, download the prices, make a little chart, see what you like, and then give me a shout and ask me, Yossi, are these units any good? Can we make any money on them? We also have this one-day insider event on Sunday, December 2nd. And this event, uh, Bruce Croxon, the guy from Lava Life, if you remember Lava Life, um, and I think he's on... Uh, um, the Shark Tank, I, I don't really watch that stuff, but I, th I think he's was uh, one of these guys, and he's going to give a little uh, presentation. And what's important here is it's an opportunity to invest. It's an opportunity to claim your stake. Now, the junction is an area that was looked down upon. You know, it's not good, it's this, it's that. Okay, but you know what? King West, 10 years ago, when I bought these units from Fashion House, I was crack addicts on the street here. 
Okay, so, oh, I need to, it's too, no, it's not too late. It's, like, it's not too late because the city is growing and new areas will develop. So if you can see this, okay, oh my God, I could have bought this unit for 2649 on and on and on we go here's one that was the model suite for 350 my friends 350 you get eight hundred thousand dollars for these units now nice design by the way all right so you now you understand um where is this stuff is coming from and all these numbers are coming from i wish the other link was working because that's got a chart but you can see also the average price is growing so the amount of sales are growing because there's more public people coming in and releasing more units. So there's more inventory and more people are moving and shaking and doing their thing. Okay. And the price is going up because there's more demand. So here there's a 27,000 uh, average increase in price in the Trevor MLS uh, from 17 to 18. I think it's going to be 15 to 20% uh, for 2018 and 19 each. And I think we're going to double prices in less than 10 years like we've done because we are accelerating. It's going faster and faster. Okay? It's spiraling. Um, so Twitter is a good place to find information. And do me a favor. Don't be afraid. Send me an email or a note. Ask me, hey, I'm thinking of investing. Um, I don't know if I should do it. Even if you have an agent, I don't care. Just give me a shout. I will help you. I will tell you what I think. I'll give you my opinion. I'll send you some links to some information that can help you. And, you know, for those of you who want to work with me, I would love to work with you. It's fun. I've learned so much from meeting fellow investors. And it's really good to be in an environment where other people are like you. They're interested in this topic. They're excited about it. They believe in it. And they want to make a difference for themselves and their families. And that's what we're doing here. Okay. So uh, we discussed the stockyards. Uh, Toronto real estate market. Okay. So there you go. Um, what else I wanted to show you here? This is the YouTube channel, youtube.com, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Uh, and here you'll see the newest uploads, my Black Friday video, Top Junction video, one bedroom, one million. Uh, Toronto prices are insane. Junction and so on and so forth. I also got some of the stuff we have in Brantford going on. Uh, what's on King West and on and on. And this video will end up here too. Okay. Now I want to show you some very good plans that I really like. So this one came from, and this is, by the way, when I told you I'm going to show you a surprise at the end, this is it. I'm going to show you what is a really, really good investment plan, okay? So there it is. Look at this one. 446 square feet. It's a small little room. This is a 60 Colburn, by the way. And these units, if you look back, roll back on my Twitter or my site, you'll still see these units. I was offering them to for sale for like 400 some thousand dollars. Okay, so 20% of that $80,000, that's a deposit, and basically the rest, you don't have to pay it. Someone else is going to pay for you. And to me, that's a very good unit because the kitchen is at the back, so you get a proper living dining room. It's kind of a bachelor, okay? I don't know if they call it bachelor or studio. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but it's a very, very good unit. It's got a large balcony, and one person can be very, very happy here. So that is a great example of a unit. It's not the long and narrow that you can't really sit and enjoy yourself. You can actually have a life in this unit, okay? You can have a good life. You're right at King and in, uh, in that church and King. So you're like a walk from Young and King. Let's say you just uh, finished university or you're like a few years in the financial sector. There you go. Okay? These guys in the financial sector, they starting their 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 uh, salaries at 100, 150, you know, uh, it, in a few years, if you're good and, and you work your way up, you're making two, three hundred thousand dollars. Then you move to the larger units, but that's where you start. All right, um, and look at the prices. Okay, this is also kitchen at the back, same unit. This is a long and narrow unit, but kitchen in the back. That is a very good unit because the kitchen not on the side. So these are the unit to look for. This is a good unit. Now it's got a, it's 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 got a concrete pillar here, but that's okay. Some of them do have it. Here's a similar unit. This is a bit of a smaller unit with, you know, kitchen in the back. Bedroom is a nook. That's all you need. That works really well if you're in King West because you're walking to work, you're walking everywhere. You know, you don't need to take a cab to King West or Queen West because you're always there. And, you know, if you work in one of the uh, media companies on, uh, on uh, Spadina or you work in Shopify Indigo here, the new building is about to open any day now. Right here. What's wrong with that? So you get yourself a great 
living here and if you own it that's great you're paying your own mortgage it's amazing and if you're an investor someone else does it for you even better <coughs> all right so that's my point my point is you know it doesn't matter and it doesn't even matter how long it takes what matters is that you claim your stake <coughs> and then you can start play the game and the game is the game of appreciation I need to get something here that will make, will do good for me okay and when I get something that does good for me I'm okay I can go to bed because this thing is working for me you know if someone's paying you two thousand dollars a month in rent they're paying you sixty three dollars a day every day think about it yes you have expenses your mortgage expenses your condo fees expenses your municipal tax but you know they're gonna pay you enough to cover those sometimes more that's called causative, uh, positive, positive cash flow so uh, I think that's good enough for today my friend this one I want you to focus about about the positive aspects of the investment I want you to see that it's a long-term game okay um, now obviously we're doing a lot of flips to assignments you know and those are doing great a hundred thousand profit two hundred thousand profit that's normal that's common you know it's just how it works. You report it on your taxes, of course, all that stuff. But, you know, that's also part of the game. If you're interested in just buying it and flipping it, you can do that because you're helping the economy and you're helping Toronto because more people need rooms. We don't even need rental housing. So you're going to put the first amount. The builder is going to build it. Somebody's going to you know, buy from you and live there. So you essentially help them. That's, anyway, that's how I see it, okay? So that is very good, very happy with uh, the progress we made for today. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, if you want to give me a shout, please do, regardless if you're buying or not, if you bought, if you have an idea, I don't care. I just like to talk to other investors because there's always something to learn and to enrich each other. So that's our thing. That's our goal. That's what we do. <laughs> Dogs barking, not mine. All right, uh, everyone, have a great day. Live long and prosper. You'll see how.